Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope, are you able to see my screen? Hello? Y yes, your screen is yeah, very clear. Yeah. We are seeing fishing. Okay. I am enjoying some oh. some sites at the beach. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, just when I joined in, I found you doing uh, some field work at uh, Kassen Fish Landing Site. And I just want to pick up from there and continue now to try to help uh, our candidates internalize uh, what takes place uh, within the fishing sector. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, fishing is a, a topic that you have covered over time. And it is one of the topics that we we'll expect to cover at UIUSCE. Um, therefore, going to, we are going to learn together. I'm going to generate a lot of activities this afternoon. And you have been a good class, by the way. The geography class has been a very good class. I will expect a lot of responses from you and so that we can remind ourselves and, uh, and learn together. So uh, this afternoon, we shall start looking at fishing in Uganda. And uh, as uh, I will start the session with this simple question, uh, what, what is fishing? What is fishing? Please go to the chat room and give me your perception uh, of what you think fishing is. What do we understand by the term fishing? I'm sure this is a topic you have covered at ordinary level. And today we are simply taking it to another height. And that is why for most of the, the afternoon, I will generate activities and we shall learn together. Okay. Okay, I'm waiting for you in the chat room. Friends, friends in the chat. Okay, I can see Leila here saying fishing is the extraction of fish species from water bodies. Thank you. Extraction of aquatic life from water bodies. Selena, thank you. Extraction of aquatic life from water bodies. Good, good, good. Okay, I can, like I have said, this is something. Slivia Nangwazi, thank you very much. Selena, thank you. Grace Rachel is extraction of aquatic life from water bodies. That is good. Okay, one more. Fishing is the extraction of fish uh, from water. Okay, good. Fishing is the extraction of aquatic life. Good. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, friends, for answering, uh, for getting to this call. So like you have said, like you have said, your responses are very good. And let's just try to look at what I have here. And so that we can, okay. Yeah, I'm strongly agreeing with you that fishing refers to the extraction, like you have said, or refers to the removal of fish resources from their habitats. And like you have all. Seen where the fish survives. So briefly, fishing refers to the extraction, it refers to the removal of fish resources. Of course, uh, you have talked about aquatic life. We have a lot of aquatic life in the water habitats. But in this particular topic, we shall be talking about the extraction of that specific aquatic life called fish from its uh, habitats. Now, like we have done in the past, we shall again start this by trying to ponder on the status of the fish in Uganda. And like I said in the past, when you ask for the status of something, like the other day we were looking at the status of the industrial sector in Uganda. When we talk about status of something, we are looking for the futures of that sector. In this case, we are saying, what are the key futures of the fishing sector in Uganda? At a glance, if somebody were to ask you, make a comment about the fishing sector in Uganda, what would you tell them at a glance? You would certainly run to something like the dominant fishing grounds. You would run something like the types of fish caught and landed. You would run to something like uh, the, the, the status of the sector in terms of employment. You would give us an outline future about maybe its contribution to foreign exchange. We know that a lot of fish is being exported to outside countries. You would maybe run to something like the, 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 the growing fish processing industries. You would tell us about maybe uh, the, the contribution of the sector to Uganda's gross domestic product. 
Of course, we are dealing in a quite, quite many sectors. We have in our dominant sector as agriculture, but we also have other sectors. Tourism is one of the sectors. Industry, which we have just completed last week, is one of the sectors. So all these ones play, contribute to the gross domestic uh, product of the country. What are the total income resources from generated from, from our from our boundaries. You would maybe run to something like the trend of fishing. Is the trend of fishing increasing? Is it declining? Is it changing? Hmm? When you talk about, when you talk about say, foreign exchange earnings, maybe you would want to tell us something, a future of the fishing uh, sector in terms of maybe fish markets, that we have the domestic market, maybe we have the regional markets, Maybe we have international markets. So um, I am saying this, and I want to just add something here, that we are going to build the status together through a variety of activities. And I want to call upon you, like you have done in the past, please, when there is a call, participate, so that at the end of the day, you benefit from uh, learning what we call holistic learning. Remember, this is online teaching. We may not have opportunity to have a one on one. And therefore, that is why, for us in the geography department, we have chosen an interactive methodology. And that's why, many times when I come online, I request you not to misuse the chat room because the chat room is going to be your, you are going, going to be an area where you are going to be throwing your responses, where we shall pick things that we can throw more light about, where corrections ought to be made. So I'm kindly imploring you to be the mature people I want to teach this afternoon and not this uh, sometimes when I'm teaching uh, ordinary level, they come to the chat room and then you find them posting there, uh, everything. I want to implore you really to not to misuse the chat room so that we can use it uh, specifically for learning. So I want us to build the status together and I'll be giving you activities and please kindly respond to them. So that when we finish those activities, we shall be able to say, oh, the major fishing grounds are this. The major types of fish caught and landed in Uganda are this. The implication of the sector to employment is the, con the sector contributes this much to foreign exchange earnings. The processing industries have been increasing from this to this or have been generally uh, doing ABCD. So the activities that we are going to look at this afternoon shall be intended mainly to generate the status of the fishing sector in Uganda. Now that we know what fish, fishing is, we have said fishing is the extraction of, uh, of fish from their habitat. One of the ways through which fish is extracted is by the use of hooks. Now, again, let me throw this back to you and expect responses from the chat room. Apart from hooks, how else is fish extracted or removed from their habitats? How is fish removed from the water? You already told me what fishing is, is the removal of, uh, of uh, the removal of fish from its habitats. And we are saying one of the way that's removed is by the use of hooks. And I've just brought this one here to show what a hook looks like. Uh, what are the other ways that uh, fish is uh, removed from, from its habitats. I'm waiting for you in the chat room. Type something, there quite, could be quite a number of, 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 yes, I can see, okay, let me go to my chat room here. Oh, very good use of nets, very good use of nets, very good trolling, Selena, I've seen that one. Gill netting, dockers, I've seen that one. Charity, use of nets, good. Okay, okay, good. Okay, that is good. Use of nets, use of gill net through trolling. Okay, I can see here some of the Maggie talked about spearing. Okay, yeah, that is one of the methods. Uh, use of gill nets, gill netting. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for, for, for your responses. Now, Let's try to come um, with what I have here. Yes, use of loops, 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 loops. 
loops and Yelena have not understood loops, but uh, okay, somebody is talking about bait, bait fishing. No, baits, a bait, when you have a hook like this, normally there's something that you will put on the hook to attract fish. Okay, uh, this is uh, who, who, who brought this. Let me just I'm looking for the person so that we can come back together. Oh, Shamira Nanyonga, yes. Uh, you talked about bait fishing. Bait fishing could be related to the use of hooks. That every time you have got a hook, there must be something that will entice the fish so that it is trapped by the hook. In many places, you find people getting some small snails and putting on the hooks to attract the fish. So those small things that we put there to entice the fish before it is caught is what we actually call the baits. Okay, thank you very much, uh, friends, for the responses. And now let me, okay, somebody has talked about passing, the scrolling, good. All those are good responses from you. I'm trying to run away from this. Okay, so you have already talked about this in your responses. You have talked about the use of hooks. I've tried to bring it here uh, diagrammatically. You have used, talked about the use of, of nets, use of gill nets. Here is a, a simple example of a laid out gill net. Oh, I didn't hear people talk about basket. Basket, uh, basket fishing is one common method that is actually used especially in the rivers. And this is also kind of, this one is just an explanatory a message on, uh, on the kind of basket, but certainly basket fishing is another common method that is used for fishing, especially in, along the rivers and streams, even in the wetlands. And uh, here, this method, we have uh, what we call um, cast netting, where somebody will be throwing a net and then it will, where people throw nets and then they are able to scroll back and catch the fish. You have already talked about beach signing where an enclosure is made and fish that is within that column is, is caught and then it is pushed towards the beach. So these are some of the methods that you have actually brought up uh, in the, in the chat room, I decided to use the, 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 the diagrammatic um, uh, presentation here to show you uh, the different methods that are being used to extract fish. So at the end of the day, we are going to ask ourselves that we are building the status. What could be the dominant methods being used? We are seeing here that there is the use of hooks, but sometimes we call angling, in some places, especially the, the, the streams and the lake, rather the rivers, some people use baskets. Of course, these are traditional methods. Gill netting, where fish is, a net is laid in the water and the fish is trapped by the gills. Beach staining, just like we are seeing here, these members here have laid their net and now they are pulling it towards the beach. This is also trying to illustrate beach net, rather beach staining. Spearing is one of the methods that is used, especially in the wetland areas. And then trolling had been introduced by the Chinese on Lake Victoria, but because of its very indiscriminate nature, which was leading to depletion of fish, of fish, of fish stocks, it was actually suspended. And I think now it has been stopped. So this is what I want us to note as part of our status on fishing. We have on, rather on the methods. We have identified the different methods of fishing and we have seen them diagrammatically. Now, what can we note from here? Local methods like baskets, crops, like the hooks and line methods have continued to be employed widely. And like I'm saying, these are mainly traditional methods of fishing. They are used on very, very small scale and purpose for purposes of subsistence. The bulk of the production, especially for commercial, is by what we call artisanal scale fishers. This utilizes a variety 
of various fishing gear, including uh, gill nets, which are commonly used in our waters. They use long lines, they use the beach scenes, and they use mosquito nets, especially for catching, for catching, uh, for catching mokeni. So this is something that I wanted us to note as part of our status, that from what we have just seen above, there are a variety of methods being used. We have got local methods that are mainly used for subsistence purposes. And then we have got artisanal scale fishers who are using various methods, but mainly including uh, gill nets, the long lines, and the beach seine nets. I want to take you again to this. We are looking at the status of the fishes in Uganda. We want to raise comments, quick comments about what we think about the fishing sector in Uganda. But if we were faced with an off um, question, quiz, comment about the fishing sector in Uganda. I'm now asking again that study the photographs here showing a typical fish landing site in Uganda. And using these photographs here, please, again, in the chat room, Comment about the fishing sector using these photos here. Look at these photos and make a comment. You can make a comment about the type of boats being used. You can make a, com a comment about the, about the vegetation at the landing site. You can make a comment about the nature of boats that are being used. You can make a comment about the infrastructure. Hmm? You could make a comment about the powering of the bots so that uh, we, we get a quick comment about what we think the fishing sector in Uganda could be by looking at a fish landing site. I'm waiting for you in the chat room again. Okay, mainly local fishing equipment. Very good, Samra, very good. That one's a good observation. She's saying to see mainly local local fishing uh, boats, uh-huh, good. Something else, who are fishing methods? Paul, I want you to be specific here. Who are fishing methods? Which ones are these? Eh? Uh-huh, I can see Angelina saying the, the, the landing site is overpopulated, you see? So fishing village is true, you can see that the landing sites are actually, there are so many people. They are mainly using wooden boats, that's a good observation. Good observation. Uh -huh. I want one, and then people have identified the nature. Uh -huh. Use of poor boats are mainly made of wood. Okay, good. You can see jolly use of poor fishing nets. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you for, for, for answering my call. Now let's compare with what I put it here. Uh, Oh, my screen is not moving. Okay, now there it is. Okay, you have talked about uh, about some of this. You have said canoes are the dominant vessels. That is correct. When I looked at this, I thought that these landing sites here are very poorly developed in terms of infrastructure. There is no much infrastructure development here. Eh? That was my simple observation. There is minimal infrastructure at most of our fish land sites. And later on, talked about congestion. It's a poorly developed landing site. Okay, good, 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 Brian. It is congested through presence of the water we oh you have seen the water we right so some of the boats they use engines to power some of the boats like here i observed that they are using these engines to power the boats of course you will get to know the challenges of using some of this if i ask i know you will tell me there is a lot of pollution of the water bodies for now, we are simply looking at the nature of the of the 
of the landing site. Somebody has correctly said that when you look at some of these landing sites here, they are almost being engulfed by the, the, the water weight. Eh? Uh, there was also the lack of protective gear that when you look at most of the people here, they don't seem to have uh, protective gear, even the people who are in the boat. So this is um, a typical fish landing site in Uganda. The lack of preparedness of this fishing of these fishing landing sites sometimes has effects on the fishing activities, on the marketing of fish, on the processing of fish, eh, with minimal with minimal. Are the dominant? What is the implication of this? It means that uh, we are using poor vessels. Waters. If we are talking about the use of engines empowering the boats, good, but we are saying it may have implications of the conservation of the water bodies. If we are observing rightly that there is a water hiatus, it has an effect on choking choking the, 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 the landing site, the development of the landing site. If it goes into the waters, like we can see, it can lead to suffocation of fish. So I just wanted to bring this to ponder on how the places where the fish coat is taken. And I want us to start thinking louder that what problems do the, the, the fish in sector face? Some of them can actually be observed here. Like somebody has talked about the water hiatus. When it chokes the landing sites, then the landing of boats becomes difficult. Like somebody has talked about the congestion. People make it makes people vulnerable to contracting diseases. The lack of protective gear is a problem to the fishing sector. So that is what I was trying to bring up here. And later on, of course, when we go to now build our status, we shall say. Most of uh, our, we are the dominant type of vessels being used are animals. That our fish landing sites are poorly developed. There is minimal infrastructure. Our landing sites are poorly developed because some of them are being choked by the water hyacinths. That the lack of protective gear by the people, by the people who are carrying out active fish or make, having a, who are in active fishing activities is a danger to their lives. So that is something I wanted to bring up. Again, talking about the fishing sector in Uganda, we are expected to look at the fishing grounds in Uganda. I have already put here that there are varied sources or habitats of fish in Uganda. What am I requesting you to do now? Let's again go back to our chat room and list down the different fish habitats that we know. I'm waiting for you in the chat room. What list down the different fish habitats that you know? Let me check. Okay, very good. Swamps, I can see rivers. Thank you. Raina lakes. Yes, Maggie lakes. Brian swamps. Good. Uh -huh. Brian ponds. Good. You know the thing, right? Very good. Listing ponds. All right, All right, All right. Good ponds. Huh. Sorry, rivers. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming to this uh, call. Uh -huh. Somebody has brought the idea of oceans in Uganda. No, Uganda is a landlocked country and therefore none of its territory is touched to the ocean or the sea. So most of our fish landing uh, sites, rather fish, fish landing, we cannot talk about the oceans because we are actually a landlocked what? country. Thank you for that. Fish farms, okay, I think those are ponds, somebody's talking about swamps, somebody's talking about lakes. Thank you. So let us just see what I have down here. Let's check, okay. Dam, damming. Okay, some ponds, have, but there's water damming, especially in the ponds. Somebody has talked about the wetlands. Okay, good. Thank you for, 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 for responding to this now. Ends my 
screen record this to move. Okay, there we are. You have rightly told me in the chat room that there are legs. And here I'm giving you some examples of the legs where fishing takes place in Uganda. Lake Victoria, Lake Choga, Lake Albert, and many of them. You in the chat room have told me about the rivers. And here I want to agree with you that there's a lot of fishing that takes place in our rivers. I'm only supplementing by giving some of the examples where after the fishing uh, takes place, you have rightly told me in our chat room that swamps are key fishing grounds. I'm only supplementing here by giving you some examples of the wetlands where fishing is taking place, Nabugabo, Sango, the others around Lake Victoria, Rwampanga, Namasari, mainly these are found around Lake Choga. And these should have been Bicinia swamps or Peta swamps, Kwanya swamps. There are swamps along River Kafu, along River Katonga, which are having fish. You have also told me about the ponds. These are artificial, artificial fish habitats. You have told me about these artificial fish habitats, and uh, here they are. Yes, I want to agree with you that there's now a lot of fish farming. People are building fish ponds in different ways. And uh, I just brought here some pictures of fish ponds to help us internalize this, that uh, a lot of fish farming is coming up, aquaculture, and uh, they have become key fishing grounds in our country. Okay. So these are things that you have already talk, given me, you told me in the chat room about the lakes. I'm just supplementing with the examples of some of the lakes, the rivers, and I'm supplementing with some of the rivers here, the swamps or the wetlands, and here we are. And we also said one other key habitat of fishing, or fish, or the fishing grounds is actually in the ponds. And so I'm just winding up the fishing grounds by saying that the Fish ponds are now found in various parts of Uganda, including in Tebe, parts of Kampala, in Jinja, in Kalsa. You'll find them in almost uh, many places uh, of Uganda. So fish farming is now an in thing, and, uh, and very many people are taking part of it. How are they able to bring the fish in the ponds and maintain them there? That's the question I see uh, in, the, in the chat room. Um, at Kajasi, we have an aquaculture, an aquaculture, um, let me call it farm, which is helping mainly in the, I'm just trying to answer a similar question in the chat room here about the fish, fishing in the fish ponds. And the, the aquaculture people normally help in, in making these fish. And they sell them like you can go and buy chicks and take them to a poultry farm. For the fish, they will take them to the ponds. And there's also fish feeds, which they provide them in the fish ponds. And they are able to do what? They are able to grow. So fish is being bred uh, at some centers, especially at the Fisheries Institute in Entebbe and also in Kajansi. So the fish farmers will go there and buy from the fish breeders they bring them onto their fish farms or into their fish ponds. And there's also fish food that they provide for them. Just like I'm saying, like you can get the chicks uh, for chicken, then you go and buy the chicken feeds, you buy the, the brand and so on and so forth, take care of them and they are able to grow. So fish, fish farmers normally get from uh, the aquaculture breeding center in Terry and in Kajans. Those are the most known anyway. Okay, thank you. Here, I was uh, only trying to, I was trying to bring my map here to show the, the fishing grounds uh, in Uganda. And here, I'm just trying to highlight the lakes, the rivers, the wetlands around these lakes. 
and also the fish ponds in the different uh, parts of Uganda. Having said that, we are building, remember friends, we are building, we are building knowledge to understand the status of the fishing sector in Uganda. Okay, I'll leave that one. I was looking at the chat room. Fine. Now, I want us to study the photographs below, showing various employment opportunities in the fishing sector. And also use those photographs to list down some of the employment opportunities in the fishing sector. For those people who have just joined, we said we are building knowledge. We are building from what we know to be able to come up with the general status of the fishing sector. And that as we go along, we shall discover that we have a lot of things to learn. Like I brought the idea of the, the idea of the, of the fish landing site. From the fish landing sites, I'm sure you can build a lot of things about the problems, about the opportunities, about the nature of the fishing gear, okay? Which we shall use later when we look at the factors, for example, for growth and development of fishing. We shall reflect back on some of the things that we are seeing here. And that is why I thought I could not make this presentation without some of the pictorials. Later on, for example, we shall be talking about availability of adequate capital. To do what? Then we shall come back here to construct, for example, these fishing ponds. Availability of adequate capital to do what? For example, to fence off this, this, uh, this fish ponds. So the reason I am bringing this is for both all of us to build knowledge that is going to help us build the status, but also approach the other sectors or the other, the other parts of fishing um, while reflecting on this background information. I was just finishing here to talk about the, the fishing grounds in Uganda. And right, right there, you have identified the lakes and we gave examples above. You identified the rivers and we have given the examples above. We talked about the swamps and we have given uh, some names of the swamps. And also we have said that uh, fish farming is a growing business within the fisheries sector of Uganda. Now, I want us to look at uh, the photographs below and then list down some of the employment opportunities in the fishing sector. There you go. These photographs are showing a different employment opportunities in the fishing sector. When you look at them, what do you make about uh, the different uh, opportunities for employment uh, in the fishing sector? Let's go to the chat room, please. Oh, somebody is saying I should be show them up. Okay, let's just finish this activity. Okay, somebody is talking about the marine. Somebody is talking about very good. These are employment opportunities here. Um, somebody is talking about. Let's see here. What? Okay, it's never has gone very far. Okay, okay, I can see fishermen. Good. Somebody's talking about the marines. I think he's referring to these patrollers here. Okay, that is good. Uh, somebody is talking about somebody is talking about where am I not? Okay, fish preservation, that's good. Somebody has seen the fish transporters, very good. Huh, huh, good, 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 good. Let's bring one, two, three more, and then we move on. So we are looking at the different fish, rather different opportunities in the fishing sector in Uganda. Uh -huh, somebody's talking about investors. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had not seen this one. I think this has uh, seen the investors. Okay, very good. Fish packers, very good. I think somebody is talking about the what the fish processing industries. Okay. 
thank you very much for responding to this. Uh, thank you very much for responding to this call. And now let me let me see what I have here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have already given me the different employment opportunities in the fishing sector. As we build up the status, I just want to let you now know that all these people here that you are showing me are potential are employed by the fishing sector. Statistics has it that over 1.3 million people are directly or indirectly working in the fishing sector, either in fish processing, like we have just seen up here. Uganda has over 11 fish processing factories, and these are employing many fish, fish processors. We have got people who are employed to patrol the waters. I just brought in this one here to show uh, the role of the Marines in the fishing sector. There are people who are employed as transporters. There are people who are making the boats that are used for, that are used for, for fishing. There are people who are marketing, eh? like these people here, for those of you who come from my place, this is a common method of marketing fish in my place called Illumino. There is a very good fish landing site called Majanj. And most of the local people there will market their fish uh, using bicycles. We have people who are employed at fish landing sites for handling, handling purposes. So arising out of this, I'm just drawing a simple conclusion that the fishing sector employs very many people up to a tune of 1.3 million people or even over. And they work in different capacities like we have already identified for me in the chat room. Some are fish processors, some are patrolling, others are marketeers, others are transporters. And uh, therefore, as, as a matter of status, we are saying that the fishing sector is a key employment sector or a key employing sector in the in the economy of this country. These pictures you see here, um, I just wanted to let something about fish export. Let's just look at observe them and then we shall look at uh, shall look at the next slides. That fishing, uh, much of Uganda's fish is also being exported to other other countries. And here we are seeing the refrigerated trucks. We are seeing the parking, maybe ready for the airport. We are seeing the packaging here, the fish fillet. We are seeing the 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 the, the cool, the 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 vans, the refrigerated trucks, and maybe taking fish to to the airport. So, I just wanted to to highlight it here that Uganda's major markets are international, they are regional, and domestic markets. Our major international markets are in the European Union and in the United Arab Emirates. Our regional markets are in the Southern Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, if we don't have the border, border closures. These are our regional markets and a lot of our fish goes there. We have our domestic market where you are there. Every time you go to the shops, rather you go to the markets, you find people um, people selling and buying fish. And I want, just wanted to say this, that uh, fish exports include, I will have the, 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 the fresh fish, the chilled fish, the frozen fish. And for the regional markets, you even find that we are having uh, dry fish or smoked fish. So uh, fish exports, okay, I'm still looking at this, what are fish, fish fillets? Fish fillets, nowadays I hear people talk about um, fish fillets, um, explain fish fillets as uh, the fish meat or the fish flesh that has been separated from, from the bones. Hmm? These people will not export uh, the whole fish. They will remove the, whole, the flesh, which we normally call the fish fillet. 
Um, I don't know where this question is coming from, but many of you could have heard people talking about mugongo was when they remove the fish, then they remove the fish fillet, when they remove the fish flesh, then there are bones which are left behind. Some people actually deprive them or even sell them as fresh, as fresh fish. We are building the status of the of the of the fishing sector in Uganda together. So now, what is the contribution to GDP to the diversification of the economy? I just want to note here that in 2020, fishing contributed 2.6% to Uganda's gross domestic product, making it the second largest foreign exchange Anna, only second to coffee. So for us here, as, as we build the status of the fishing sector, we shall note that um, fishing contributes a lot to the, contributes a lot to the gross domestic uh, product of Uganda. Uh, maybe I, will, I hope I remember to come back with the figure in our next meeting. For now, for purposes of the status, I want us to take a leaf from this, that apart from coffee, there are other exports. And in 2020, fishing excelled as the second largest foreign exchange and the other thing I wanted us to look at today is the trend of fishing as we build the status of the fishing sector, the trend of fishing. And again, I'm going to take you to this activity. I'm going to ask you to study the table below showing the total fish catch from Uganda's water bodies. This is the question that was given to the candidates of USCE of 2040. This table I derived it from one of the past papers. And now using the information from the table, I want to ask you to describe the trend, the trend of fish catch. Describe the trend of fish catch. The table is there. It is the table. When you look at your question bank, you'll see this table. That's the table that the candidates of you, the CEO of 2014, we are given. Let us study the table and we'll be able to describe the trend of fish. Oh, let me bring back the table. This column here is showing the years. This column is showing the total fish catch. 2014 had 4, 434,800. Sorry, this zero is not there. It should be 434,800. In 2205, 411,800 tons. 2006, we have 362,200. 2007, 369,300. 2008, we have 364,800. And uh, in 2009, the statistics was still in that 366,600. This zero is not there, this is a mistake, really, should be 800. Now, if you have looked at this table, I wanted now to ask you to do the following activity. So about this, my... If we have studied the table, look at the table, look at the figures. When you look at those figures, what would you say about the trend of fish catch between uh, 2004 and 2009? My friends, I'm waiting for you in the chat room. Okay, some people are already there. They say the biggest fish catch was that, was 434,800 in 2004, good. In 2004, there was an increase in production. Ha! Huh. Now, this person here yeah, has not named himself. I will continue calling him on my iPad. 
Irino Deke has noted the largest amount of fish catch was 400, 4,000, from is dancing. Okay, somebody says between 2004 and 2005, there was a reduction, John Stephen Mansa. Very good. Somebody has seen a trend, a reducing trend. Uh -huh. Roy Richards has seen that there was a gradual decrease. Eh? So somebody has seen a decreasing trend. Uh -huh. Somebody saying decline of fish caught according to the increasing, yes, hey, I hadn't seen this one. Let me check. Says there's a decreasing trend. This one here, there's the decline here, there's and there, there's an increase when you compare here, there's a decline here, there's a, an increase here. Okay, okay, fine. I can see that one. That concern is noted. Uh -huh. Somebody saying between 2004, 2005. There was a decrease in fish catch. So somebody has seen a decreasing trend. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to this call. Okay, let me just finish with this one. 2004, there was more fish catch. Uh -huh. People are seeing that in 2004, that's when we had the highest. I can see somebody here, not known him or herself, Sky, that there was a gradual decrease between 2004, 2008. So that person has seen a decreasing trend. Okay, somebody saying Prince Henry Kayondo, slight decrease in the fish coat. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us see what we are having here. At least from the chat here, you have given me uh, a very very nice background now to rely on. You have given me a nice background to to expound on what I'm seeing. People have seen a decreasing trend. Some people, like here, true, between 2004 to 2005, there was a decline in the trend. From 2005 to 2006, there was a decline in the trend. Between 2006 and 2007, there was an increase in the trend. Between 2007 and 2008, there was a decline in the trend. From 2008 to 2009, there was an increase in the what? In the trend. So if we have a trend that is like that, from your observations, I can rightly now say that the trend, the trend of fish catch in Uganda has not been stable. I think you will agree with me. You will see that some years it is increasing, and during other years it is declining. When we have such a trend, it is described as being fluctuating, as changing, as unstable. Like you have rightly observed, between certain years, there was a decrease. Between other years, there was an increase. Between 2004-2009, there was a decline. So that trend is what we describe as being unstable, as being fluctuating, as being changing, it's an unstable trend. Now, again, you have rightly told me in our chat room there, for some years, you saw a decline. Some people said there was a decrease. Some people said there was a reduction in the trend. I want us to discuss this now. Again, I'll be waiting for you in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think accounts for the decline in the trend for some years, why would you think? Why do you think this there could be a decline here from this to this? Why do you think there was a decline from this to this? That is what I want us to discuss now, and that is the question asked to the candidates. I think in 2013, they asked them for the trend, and they're saying account for the trend, give reasons. What do you think could have led? to the declining trend that you have mentioned above. I am again waiting for you in our chat room. 
Very good. Oh, guys are here already overfishing. Thank you. Poor fishing methods. Yes. Use of inappropriate fishing method or decade. Good. Inappropriate fishing method. People using small nets. Uh huh. iPad. They are saying poor fishing methods. Good. Poaching. No. <laughs> Charity. No. Poaching is for wild animals. Okay. Fish poisoning. Yes. Use of poor fishing methods. Wrong fishing gear. Your guys are there because of depletion of the fish stocks. Yes. Shortage of capital to invest. That's right. The lack of skilled labor. We have already seen the, the, the water weed. Okay. This is a new one here. Climate change, I think. Catching of younger fish and therefore they don't give it opportunity to what? To grow. Poor infrastructures. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Very active class. Thank you for always responding to these calls. So now let's see what I have put here. Then we we'll compare and move on. Uh, what, what had I put here? And if it is, if there's something there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which is missing, please ensure that you take. Why is my not moving? Okay, water pollution, strong waves, shortage of fish. Low levels of research, good. All these are very good, very, very good, uh, very good uh, responses. This could lead to, to a decline in the what? In the trend. So, oops. I'm trying to get to the next slide. I can't get there, I wonder what. Uh, okay. Here we are. Somebody, these things you have already told me, right? Reasons for the declining trend. Overfishing. When the lakes are overfished and the rivers are overfished, definitely it may lead to depletion of the fish stocks. And while the fish stocks have been depleted, then what does it mean? It means that definitely the fish catch is going to go down. Use of bad fishing gear. You have already talked about them, the use of undersized nets where people are using very small nets to catch the fish. And in so doing, they even catch the smaller fish. That is what sometimes we call indiscriminate fishing gear. We already talked about fish poisoning. When we poison the fish, we kill both the mature and the young. Therefore, we don't give it opportunity to do what? To grow. In the waters, there are pre pre predators. Eh? Predators that actually feast on this fish. For example, Nile patch is known to be a predator fish on Lake Victoria. It actually feasts on the other smaller fish. And when that happens, the, 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 the quantity of that small fish or other fish definitely goes down. We talk about encroachment. We have got shared water bodies. Lake Victoria is shared among the, the three East African countries. Lake Albert is shared between Uganda and Congo. Lake Edward, sometimes we have heard about encroachment on the waters, Ugandan waters, by the other countries. One time we had a problem over the Migingo Islands that was being used as a conduit for Kenyans to encroach on the Uganda's fisheries resources, therefore undermining the quantity of fish caught from Uganda by the Ugandan side. Sometimes we have had restrictions on fishing activities when people discover that these fish are using the wrong fishing gear, sometimes the fisheries, fisheries office or ministry, Minister of Agriculture, suspends fishing activities on some water bodies. When there is such a restriction or a suspension, definitely the fish catch goes down. Insecurity, piracy on the water bodies, many times threatens fishing activities and actually makes the fishermen abandon fishing. And when that happens, certainly there will be a decline in the trend. Somebody already told me about climate change. Yes, we have some seasonal, seasonal streams and wetlands. Sometimes they completely dry up. In the recent past, we have been talking about the increase in the, we have been talking about the increase in the water of, of Lake Victoria. Due to climate change, it affects fishing activities. You have seen the nature of boats that we are using. They cannot, they may not go into the deeper waters. 
So various reasons like you have outlined them in the chat room and like I'm trying to summarize them here, actually account for a declining trend during some, some years. A declining trend can also be a decreasing trend, somebody has said reducing trend, all this suffice for the declining uh, trend. Now, having said that, we have seen that during certain years, there was actually an increase in the trend. And like rightly observed in the chat room that within certain years, there was an increase in the trend. Now, I want us again to discuss like we have done. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, could be resulting into 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 an increasing trend. Somebody here, what kind of predators have we got? I've already talked about the fish themselves. Crocodiles are predators. Yeah, the, 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 for example, I gave an example of the Nile patch, the predator fish keeps eating other smaller fish. Okay, availability of adequate capital malaika, good. Improvement in fishing tools used in fishing of maybe nets, uh -huh. employment of skilled labor, you see. Increase in population of fish when there are restrictions, uh -huh. high levels of technology like the cage fishing, political stability, which takes people back to the water, improved structures, maybe like roads leading to fish landing sites, good. Adequate market. When there is market, then many people will take um, will take it on as business, improved technology, planktons. Wow, 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 wow. Gazetting fishing grounds, variety of fish, fish species, freedom of interest of people to engage in fishing activities, no techno spa. Nowadays there's a lot of restriction on people engaging in fishing. After it is okay, it is the I wanted you to remove the idea of freedom, but restriction of interest is actually the correct answer. Because now the people, your boats must be registered, you must have a, I hear about introduction of numbers, so that when your boat is evolved in, in such clandestine fishing activities, you can be apprehended. A high improvement in research, good. Limited competition from other countries, not really. The indebted nature of the shorelines, improvement in research. Oh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to this call. So like you have said, let's check what we have here and we compare notes. Reasons for an increase in trend. This is what I had put up and I can see many of the things you have actually brought them up in the chat room. If there's something here, you can add on. Or if there is something there which I've not put here, you can also add it on. I talked about marine patrols. We looked at that picture before. Adaptation to modern technologies in Lake Victoria. Today we talk about cage, cage fishing, where cages are being put in the, in the in the lake to help the fish grow and mature. They have set up beach management units to help in controlling indiscriminate fishing activities. Actually, beach management is also help in sensitization of the fishermen on poor fishing grounds. There has been very prohibitive legislation in terms of laws, creating very stringent measures against people who are using poor fishing gear. Liberalization of the sector, which has allowed private sector players in the fishing sector have brought in so many players and therefore when these people come it increases on the productivity of the water bodies increased government support you have already talked about it in giving things like credit facilities loans to the to organize the fishermen nowadays i'm hearing about a mioga campaign increase in the market both on the domestic level i can see there is a hand up there okay Dixon. Yes. Yes, Dixon. Yes. Can you explain me that point of beach management units? Oh, beach management units. 
Beach management units yes, are yes. local, local organized, um, local, locally organized groups of people at the landing sites to help um, the marine, the marine people in managing um, the sector in those areas. So beach management units are just like LOCs. In the area where you said there's an LOC one, who is, has been selected maybe because of the knowledge he has about the area. So the beach management units are people who have been working at the landing sites over time. And because of their experience in staying there, because of the work they have been doing, they know what goes on at landing sites, they have been co-opted into, uh, into the management units of the fisheries sector. Just like you see LOC ones being co-opted into the security committees of government to help. So beach management units are generally, are generally functional units at landing sites, which are used by the fisheries, the fisheries, uh, the fisheries ministry or ministry of agriculture to help in the management of the fishery sector at particular fish landing sites. I hope I've been able to explain this to you that each management units are just like the LOC system. You have LOC one, LOC, LOC one with the committee there at the landing site. When they bring the marine patrols, they can guide them on what to do about the culture of a given landing site. They can help, they can be used because they know the languages, maybe they can also be used in helping in the sensitization of the people at the landing site. So those are what we call BMUs, beach management units. Actually, in the recent past, beach management units have had a lot of challenges because they have been accused of conniving with people using bad fishing gear to, to, to actually misuse uh, the water resources. But initially, that's why they had been put in place that they should be able to help the marine uh, people in managing certain situations at the landing sites. So I was explaining the reason for increment in certain years that you have seen in some is like when you go to Kassen fish landing site, there has been a lot of upgrading of the site. Right now, I think it is under a, uh, a private manager that is the four ways group of companies and you can they have really built up very good infrastructures at the landing site the handling is now very good you'll find that they have constructed things like piers or jetties when you go to the fish landing site you find they'll tell you this area is specifically handling fish for export there has been increased industrialization when they are the, the, the fish processing industry is come up. That means the demand for fish increases. When the demand for fish increases, that means many people are encouraged to invest in the fishing sector. And this may account for the increase or the improvement in the productivity of the water levels. Somebody already said in the chat there about the improved transport and accessibility to the fishing, to the fishing villages. You know, fish is a perishable product. So if it is not easily accessed, that means it goes bad. So the continued improvement for those people who have been to places like Kassen, find Navagarika Road is always being worked on to ease accessibility to the fishing landing site. Today in the major water bodies, you hear about, uh, about the ferries, they are easily accessing the islands. When you go to Bokakata in Masaka, you can easily access many islands on Lake Victoria. That accessibility means that the fish will easily be accessed, will be easily marketed, and therefore encourage as many people as possible to invest in the fishing sector. And when people invest in the fishing sector, that means that uh, its productivity definitely improves. And see many things in the chat here. Let me oh, somebody saying what are the fish demanding industries? 
Ah, okay, I'm going to talk about them just shortly. Just try to be a patient there. Yeah, it is a very important thing. Thank you. Very important fish demanding fish. Hey, actually, somebody has already tried to answer them. Thank you very much. I can see somebody has talked about the answer. C, Greenfield, C, in Entebbe, quite a number of them, but I'm going to talk about them. Please don't be, don't be okay. I can check in on them. I chat from here to find out what's going on here. Fine, fine. I'm going to talk about this. Okay, thank you for that response. I saw. Okay, so I was trying to explain. So, when you look at the trend of fishing, just in summary, we have said that uh, the trend of fishing in Uganda is actually a fluctuating trend. It is unstable. It may increase one year, decline another year. And we are saying, what could account? What would be the reasons for this fluctuating trend? Why would be the what could be the reasons for this um, unstable trend? And like you have done for me in the chat room, and like I'm trying to summarize here, that several reasons account for the decline in the trend for certain times, and there are also reasons that may account for the increase in the trend. So if they are asking you to describe the trend. And you find that the trend is fluctuating. It is not stable. Then they say, give reasons for the trend you have described. Then that is a two-way question. Give reasons for the declining trend and also give reasons for the increasing trend. Don't say the increase has been much. I think now let me only give the reasons for the increasing what? For the increasing trend. Now, the other thing as we build the status is fish for export. Somebody has just asked that question. What are the, the industries, fish processing industry? Uganda has over 10 fish processing companies. I have just given highlights of the some of them here. I smart Africa is found here in Kampala, in, in Bukoto. Uganda fish packers in Kampala. Somebody had already talked about the sea fisheries in Masaka. We did limited in Kampala. We have the fish processing companies like Gomba Fishing Industry here in Kampala, Greenfields in Entebbe. So these are fish processing companies or fish processing factories. I used to hear about uh, Uganda fish packers somewhere in Komambo, you no, know, along the other road. I don't know whether it is still there. When you go to Masese, you'll find there are Masese fish packers. And you find that most of these industries are actually found at, around Lake what? Around Lake, Lake Victoria. Now, now, I want us to discuss this. What's the importance of processing fish? What is the importance of processing fish? Uganda, there's a growing, growing number of fish processing industries in Uganda. Why do you think it is important? What are the benefits of processing fish? I'm waiting for you in the chat room. Yeah, okay, Mildred, I talked about Greenfields Limited, thank you. What do you think is the importance of processing fish? I am waiting for you in the chat room. Are you there? Okay, people are already there, let me check. Okay, very good, increase in value, increase foreign exchange and uh, source of food, all right, all right, good. Uh, to keep it for a long time, very good for preservation methods, good. Uh, uh, raw materials used in industries, good. Somebody saying for export, okay, for consumption. What is the importance? To give it a wider market, very good, that's a good one. Okay, is it transportation? Um, somebody saying diversification of the okay, that's a function, but I wanted us to zero down. Why is it important? Like somebody saying, when we process it, it can be kept for a long time, it is a perishable product. When we process it, it will give us wider market. If we process it, like somebody up there has said, it will give us better foreign exchange. Aha. Uh -huh. 
somebody here has said prolong the shelf life of, uh, of high electricity. Very good. That's what Stephen Obeke. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to this call. Let us just now let's, let, let me look at what I have here and see what we can compare with what you have just given me in the chat room. Oh, my, my screen is not moving. I don't know why. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, so I was just giving this picture. You have already seen it. Uh, this is part of the fish that is caught here. So what is why is it important? And like you have already told me, or many of you in the chat room there, when we process fish, there's value addition. When you fish that now um, that, that is processed, when we have the fillets, you are not going to sell it the same price as fish that is unprocessed. There's value addition. And when you add value to something, that means you are increasing the income, you are going to increase the revenue. It will be competitive on the world market. That is why somebody let other on in the chat room had said, we shall get more foreign what? More foreign exchange. When fish is processed, like somebody has already said, it will help us to avoid post harvest what? Losses. Fish is a perishable thing. If we don't take, if we don't process it quickly, then it will go out, it will go back. So the principle of fish pro, uh, processing is very important. And we shall state it in our, in our status that there's a growing, growing um, fish processing in that they are growing fish processing industries in Uganda, which have added value to our fish, therefore making it competitive on the world, what? On the world market. Another person will say, it's value addition, this fish processing industries, lead to value addition, and therefore more income, more revenue to the government. That you know we are having um, processing industries coming. We have already given some of the examples, and that avoids post-harvest losses because the fish processing industries will preserve the fish and therefore not allow it to go out, to go out. Here we are, fish species, caught in Uganda. We are building our sellers to come up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We are also building status, but also building knowledge to come up with a proper understanding of the fishing sector in Uganda. Fish species, Uganda has many fish species. I just want to note here that Nile perch is the most, let me say, important in commercial value and the most exported to the European Union. It is normally exported as the fish fillets and also lean, commonly called a nuni, which is mainly being taken to China for making stitching cords, which are used in the hospitals and told. Tilapia is very, very crucial, especially in the regional markets in Congo, in South Sudan, in Kenya, and it's normally taken there as, as um, smoked fish. Let me now ask you, my friends, what other fish species do you know? Let me wait for you here in the chat room and see uh, whether mud fish, very good, silver fish, very good, mukene, uh -huh, somebody has talked about mud fish, Stephen, yes. Langfish, Reina, good. Langfish, Livia, you can see. Catfish, you see. Nile patch, okay, so catfish, tilapia, okay. Wow, thank you very much for responding to this call. And now let me, let's see what we have down here and we compare. But from the chat room, I think you are agreeing with me. That, uh, that Uganda has got, um, has got many different types of fish. Okay, like we have talked about catfish, commonly in Uganda here called semutundu, silverfish, commonly call it mukene, we have langfish, commonly in Uganda here called the mamba, the eels, 
Paul Nsonzi, the Sprat, and KJ. Yeah, so Uganda has quite um, a variety of fish. Now, I wanted to end this day's discussion with this. The variation in fish catch. We have got quite a number of uh, fisheries resources in terms of lakes, in terms of rivers, and what are the main uh, fishing grounds and their productivity. But Lake Victoria contributes about 60% of the total fish catch in Uganda. Lake Choga contributes about 16% of the total fish catch in Uganda. Lake Albert contributes about 15% of um, the total fish catch in Uganda. Other lakes and rivers contribute about 9%. Now, when we meet next time, we shall be looking at the factors responsible for the variation in fish catch from the various fishing grounds. Why does this one contribute this? What could be the reasons for these other resources to be able to contribute this? So um, when we meet next time, we shall start with looking at the factors that are responsible for the variations in the fish catch. However, for today, I wanted to ask you, if you can, I know my brother Kagoya has been teaching you statistics in the last uh, few uh, weeks. Kindly copy this, just as you are seeing on my screen here, get a piece of paper and copy this. And then using any suitable statistical method, Use any statistical method. You can even just take a screenshot, or rather take a picture of it, and use any suitable statistical method to represent this information. This is a question that was given to you, the senior success, I think, of 2014. You can also try it. Using, last time I talked about an integrational approach. You are going to find these statistical questions in paper three. And please don't say that for us in paper three, we are not taught statistics. My brother, Kagoya, has been teaching you statistics. And please, we want you to bring the knowledge you have learned in statistics in paper two to be able to draw suitable statistical diagrams in paper three as well. So this is work that I'm leaving with you. Please use a suitable statistical method to show the information shown in the table. Draw a suitable statistical method to show the fish catch in Uganda between 2004 and 2009. Mr. Glover, are you, are you there? Oh, Mr. yes, Glover. I am. <clears throat> okay. I want to beg to stop here and to request you to make uh, some remarks to the to our learners and maybe after that as usual i normally ask them to open their videos so that i can be able to see them mr kalema over to you okay thank you mr basani uh, are you able to hear me ladies and gentlemen yes, yes. 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 wow so Ciao. thank you very much, Ms. Ambassani, for that exposition to fishing in Uganda. Uh, even though today is uh, an introduction day, it seemed to me that you had handled the entire topic. So I'm looking forward to the details of the areas that you have been looking at. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you too for reporting time to share and learn together. Before we do the picture, which uh, Mr. Ambassani has alluded to, I would like us to take an additional opportunity to introduce ourselves in the chat room. So you have been very open, you have given answers along the way, which I really loved. So let's get back into the chat room. Some of you were not here at the beginning. We are introducing ourselves. We are mentioning our names the school we come from, and probably the district where we come from. 
Uh, let's take a few minutes. Let's hit the chat room. Let's get to learn more about each other uh, in the next five or so minutes. The, I'm going to read out as uh, the schools and participants come in. So I'll be reading out those that uh, I'm able to see for purposes of recognition. I will then ask my colleague, uh, Mr. Namdala, to come in, mention one or two things. And then if there are other teachers who have come in, I'll give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Okay. So we are seeing uh, Stephen Odeke from uh, St. Mary's College Isubi. You're most welcome. Francis Impanga from St. Mary's College Isubi. Most welcome. Guys, you're in the right place. Uh, we've seen uh, Celine. St. Mary's Center, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, it, I think I'm skipping some people. So I need to pick them right here. I need to pick you. This is our time to know who is around, uh, to share with each other. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Please mute. Uh, please mute, please mute, take no more. Let's mute a bit for now, just for now, just for just a few minutes, just a few minutes. Let's mute quickly. Let me also try to show those people who are here, just to recognize you. It takes a lot, doesn't it? For you to get your data, to spare time to be here, to share with this, with, with everyone. Uh, probably, again, in the, in the spirit of building the community of learners, we could give you opportunity to share about your experiences because we do have, let me see. Yeah, we have some 20 minutes. We can share a few experiences together. Hmm? Why not? No. Okay, let me see. Quickly, quickly. Uh-huh. Who are the people that I have? Please hit the chat room. Hit the chat room. Hit that, that chat room. Okay, let's see. Let me get the guys. Uh, has my system frozen? Has it? Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. My connection is not good at this time. But I want to, as the system loads, I would like to thank you very much for devoting time. Mr. Ambassani, thank you for the research that you do. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have two e-learning management systems, two platforms. One is called HELP, that is Holistic E-Learning Platform. HELP, as in help me, help.sc.ug, help.sc.ug. That's a platform supported by Uganda Communications Commission run and organized by teachers from different schools to deliver content to learners. We do have also Giantpedia. Giantpedia was here way before we even thought of help. And it's a platform for geographers where geographers have been sharing uh, knowledge, etc., etc. Those two are interlinked and then uh, we work together. Did 